looking at object detection with TensorFlow 2 on the Raspberry Pi. This tutorial is going to cover how to deploy the new TensorFlow 2 object detection models, as well as custom object detection models in the Raspberry Pi. This tutorial is not going to include TensorFlow Lite, as it is really, really new with the new TF2 versions, and there are quite a few errors that I found in testing. So without further ado, let's get started with trying out TensorFlow 2 on the Raspberry Pi. To make everything as easy as possible for you guys, I've simplified all the commands into a few shell scripts, compressing tons of commands into only a few. I've also provided three object detection scripts for images, video, and real-time object detection with the Pi camera. And many thanks to my friend Gareth who helped me out with testing and refining my instructions. So first what we're going to want to do is get our Raspberry Pi up and running. I made a video tutorial on this, which I made a few months ago, and I'll have that uh, link in the description for you guys to watch. So what we're going to want to have first is either SSH access or uh, the remote desktop access through VNC viewer. And you're going to need this for uh, using OpenCV and opening up uh, windows for object detection. So first what we're going to want to do is get some updates for our Raspberry Pi. We can do this with sudo apt-get update and sudo apt-get dist upgrade. And depending on how recently you've updated your Pi, this can take anywhere from 5 minutes to an hour. And I have just recently set up this Raspberry Pi as I did a fresh installation just today. So it might only take me about a minute or two. And there we go, it's all done. Then you're gonna wanna use sudo apt-get dist upgrade. And just like the other command, depending on how long ago you updated your Pi, the time this takes will vary. For me, it should be really quick. There actually are quite a few packages that's being installed right now. But let's wait for them to all install. And there we go. So what we're going to do next is try to is to make sure our camera or our uh, camera module is enabled on our Raspberry Pi. We can do this by using sudo raspi config, going to interfacing options, going to camera, and make sure that it's enabled, and then we can finish. And then we're going to have to reboot our Raspberry Pi. So let's just do that. So that means this VNC viewer window is also going to disappear, so we can just close this. And then once our Raspberry Pi is turned on again, we can just use SSH Pi at Raspberry Pi. And the connection might time out here because it is still booting up. There we go. Just type in Raspberry for the, for the password. And there we go. Next, we're going to want to clone this GitHub repository. So you can do this with git clone https github.com slash armandpreadarshan slash object detection on raspberry pi dot git. This GitHub repository with all the commands can also be linked in the description. So just in case you want to copy and paste the commands. All right, here we go. And this clones into the object detection on the Raspberry Pi directory right here. This is a bit uh, long name, so let's rename it with MV object, and then just use tab to autocomplete, and then space and TensorFlow. And now you can see that we have a directory here called TensorFlow. Next, we're gonna wanna install our virtual environment. This is a bit similar to Edge Electronics tutorial with TensorFlow Lite on the Raspberry Pi. So you can just do this with sudo pip3 install virtual n. And we're going to create our virtual environment to avoid any version conflicts with previously installed packages on our Raspberry Pi. And here we go, that's all done. So now we're going to want to create our virtual environment with python m then TensorFlow. Oh, Python 3, sorry, not Python. Three. 
And there we go, now we should have the virtual environment all set up. So if you see into TensorFlow and you do an LS, you should now see a file or a folder in here called a bin. So you can activate our virtual environment by using source bin slash activate. And now you can see here that we have TensorFlow written in parentheses before our active path. So note, every time you open up a new terminal, you're not going to be inside the virtual environment. So you're going to have to either activate it manually or add this to our uh, bash.rc. So you can do this by using echo source tensorflow slash bin slash activate to this bash rc. So now just paste this command. Oh, whoops. Okay, I might have forgotten to copy it. Control C, Control V. And now let's exit this terminal and open up a new one and see what happens. Sage pi at raspberry pi. Raspberry. And there we go. Now enter TensorFlow upon opening up a new terminal. So let's CD back into our TensorFlow directory. And now when we ls, our directory should look something like this with the uh, object detection scripts, as well as these two shell scripts here. Now we're gonna wanna install our prerequisites. I've compressed all the prerequisites into two different shell scripts. The first to install prerequisites for OpenCV and TensorFlow 2.2.0, and the second to install dependencies for the object detection API. So first we can install our prerequisites with bash get prerequisites.sh. And this takes around five to 10 minutes. You can kick back and relax for now until this is done with installing. So I'll be right back when this is done installing. Now, after all the prerequisites are downloaded, you should get the message prerequisites downloaded successfully. You can test our installation by using Python, then using import tensorflow as tf. And then if you do print tf dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore and you should get 2.2.0. That means that TensorFlow 2 was successfully installed on our Raspberry Pi. Then you can exit the Python terminal with exit. And now we can set up the object detection API by using dot slash uh, source dot slash install object detection API dot sh. And this might also take a few minutes, so I'll be right back when this is all done. So once this script is completed, you should get the message TensorFlow Object Detection API set up successful. So then we can test out this installation by using Python, then import object underscore detection. And if this uh, command or uh, this line uh, finishes successfully, that means everything's all good, good up and running. And keep in mind that this also install or it sets up an environment variable and it adds something to our Python path. So every time you open up a new terminal, you can either set this variable uh, uh, manually using export Python path equals dollar Python path and then this command right here, or you could use this command echo export Python path and add it to our bash RC. So let's just do this to make it easier for the future. Control C. Control V. Now when we open up a new terminal, we won't have to enter in the same command every single time. So now we can uh, prepare our object detection model. So let's go back to TensorFlow. Since we already have a directory called models, let's mkdir od models for object detection. And then let's cd into od models. Now we have two choices on uh, what, we want, what we can do. We can use one of the TensorFlow pre-trained models from the TensorFlow 2 model zoo, which is right here, or we can use one of our own custom trained object detection models. Last video, I created a tutorial on how to create a TensorFlow 2 custom object detection model. So you can check that out if you don't already know how to train as a TensorFlow 2 custom object detector. So for this, or for this guide, I'm gonna be using one of the TensorFlow 2 pre-trained models as a example. So we're going to be using one of the smaller models, the SSD MobileNet V2 320x320. If you are using one of the pre-trained models, 
I recommend sticking with a model whose speed in milliseconds is under 40. Because if you use one of the faster models, the uh, FPS might suffer significantly. So we're going to be using the smallest model. So we're going to be using wget downloader model, or the tar.gz file. So this command right here. wget and then this website will download a tar.gz file containing everything that the model comes with. So now we should have ssd underscore mobile net underscore v2 underscore 20 by 320 underscore coco 17 underscore tpu dot tar dot gz. So we can unzip this with tar minus x vf ssd and tab to complete and then enter. Once this is done, we should now have a folder called with the SSD mobile net file or SSD mobile net model. So this name is a bit long to work with, so let's rename it with MV SSD, then hit tab, and then let's just call it my underscore mobile net underscore model. So the other option is using a custom object detector. So I trained my own pill classification of, or pill classification model with the TensorFlow Custom Object Detection API, which is located right here. So if you are using a custom object detector, I recommend transferring the files with whatever uh, method you want. I like to use WinSCP, and then using Raspberry Pi, tab Pi, tab Raspberry. Update. And then go back to where your model is located and you're going to need to transfer the saved underscore model.pb file to your OD models directory and your label underscore map.pb text. I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to skip this step and move on to the next one. So next we're going to want to uh, run our object detection on image video or Pi camera. So to do this we're going to need a VNC viewer for remote desktop protocol. So let's just use VNC server on our Raspberry Pi. And then with the VNC viewer, you can go into our Raspberry Pi. The reason this is necessary is because you cannot open uh, object protection or open CB windows with just an SSH terminal. So you can open up a terminal here, and you can see we're already in our TensorFlow directory. So it's CD, or in our TensorFlow virtual environment, sorry. You can CD into our directory with CD TensorFlow. And then we can run our program with, Py with Python TF Pi Camera OD.py. Whoops. Paste. And the usage of this, if you're using a different uh, location for your model or a different location for your labels, you can use specify this with minus minus model and minus minus labels. So if you're using the sample TensorFlow model I provided, which is the SSC mobile net, you can just run it with the default settings and it should work. And this model takes around three minutes to load, so I'll be right back when this is done. And now our model is loaded, so we should be seeing our object detection window pop up at any second now. And here we go. And you can see me here. Hi. And you should now be able to detect objects successfully. So let's say we're looking over here, and you can see it has you can detect potted plant, the vase. The TensorFlow pre-trained models are, ten, are trained on the uh, Coco dataset, which contains different objects or common everyday objects. So it should be able to detect a lot by default. And you can see it is detecting everything. And then to exit this window, just hit Q. And there we go. We successfully set up object detection on our Raspberry Pi. Over the next few weeks and months, I'll continue to add on to this repo and add maybe a few more programs. I might uh, look out for TensorFlow, or you might add, you might see support for TensorFlow Lite coming soon. So make sure you stay tuned and hit the like and subscribe button. If you find anything interesting, feel free to let me know in the comments or show me something, or uh, let me know on GitHub. But for now, bye.